When you are an introvert, you will notice that you struggle to make the simplest decisions in life. Do I want to socialize or become extinct? So when my phone promised to help me avoid social situations, a research was conducted to study the relationship between personality traits and internet addiction. And it concluded that introverts are more susceptible to internet addiction than extroverts because they have a hard time establishing relationships and coping with emotional struggles. The same research found that internet addicts had lower self-esteem, were lonelier, and had poorer social skills than moderate users. And I want to note here that they use the term moderate users, not non-users, to prove that you can still use the internet without being addicted to it. Internet addiction disorder is just as real as OCD, and it is listed in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders 5. Its symptoms include isolation, denial, avoidance, and the continuation to use technology and social media despite experiencing negative consequences. And I understand that it could be hard for us to know whether or not we have these symptoms when we lack the distance. So I want each of you right now to assess where you stand in each of the following questions. Do you find yourself passing up social situations to be on your phone? On a scale of 1 to 10, how important is social media to your sense of self and the way you live your life? And I want to note here that determining the importance of something is not just determined by how much you're doing it, but also by how much you're not doing other things. How often do you catch yourself on your phone for longer periods of time than you originally planned? How often do you catch yourself saying just a little bit more? When you are addicted to something, the positive payoffs outweigh the negatives. So you start to convince yourself that you need your phone to function. And this is exactly what tech companies take advantage of, the convenience of social media and technology. Technology became so convenient, we started wondering how we got off before it. Tech companies want to turn the lies we tell ourselves into truths. They want to legitimize our excuses. But to continue to use social media and phones despite experiencing the negative consequences doesn't just sound like an addiction. It sounds like an act of self-harm. So we are the victims in a sense because we chose technology in the intention of making ourselves better off and we ended up being addicted to it. But we are also the villains because we are less likely to do anything about it. In a fast-paced world with increasingly being busy, the free time that you have for yourself doesn't allow for what you really want to do with it. You can't go to the gym if you have an hour slot between your meetings. Technology promised us convenient leisure. So not having technology today will cause us as much stress as having it. Did you guys hear about the Facebook and Instagram crash that happened recently? I don't use social media that often. But when I read about it, I still got anxious. It felt like anarchy, chaos. Can you imagine what you would be doing if you weren't on social media? How will your life even look like? Social media is not just a source of fun. It's a source of validation. Without social media, no one will care about your achievements. No one will care what you wear, what you do, what you eat. No one will even know you exist. You will simply be forgotten. When we invest our time in social media, we are investing in our cyber identity. But the image that you display of yourself on social media isn't who you are. It's a representation of yourself. You display the version that you want people to think you are, the perfect version. You want people to think that you're funny, cool, adventurous, interesting, and achieving. But that goes against our imperfect nature. That's how shallowness and superficiality started. When you build a certain image of yourself, and that image gets validated, you slowly start to adjust your real identity to fit your cyber identity. You start behaving in ways that will get you more likes in real life. You subconsciously become more perfectionist. You become, you become more critical of yourself and of others. And when everyone is a perfectionist, it becomes really hard to accept and be accepted. Technology has enslaved us to our own destructive self-awareness. When you seek your own self-validation, you no longer care about what other people think of you. It's called confidence. 
That because the ultimate source of validation for internet addicts is social media. How amazing would it be to know that without social media, you are still as cool, still as achieving, and even more interesting? Because chances are, that's most likely the case. How amazing would it be to know that your presence of itself is enough to make you memorable? Social media is pushing us to act against our values, like making us believe that being involved in other people's lives is helping us catch up, and that we should be less honest and less emotional if that gets us more likes. And I see this every day. When my sister first came to London, we would be walking in Central, like two normal human beings, and I would tell her a joke. She would instantly give me her phone, ask me to repeat my joke again so that she can make a video about it. And she would do the same scene multiple times so that she can pick the most natural one. I mean, if this isn't acting, I don't know what is. And then at the end she said, you seem fake in all of them. <laughs> and I wonder why. <laughs> Whenever we went out, I felt like I was dragging someone along, except that someone was the whole world. And I get it. Her phone knows her taste in music, her likes and dislikes, her hopes and dreams. Honestly, I think they look cute together. I just miss her. No one likes to see their loved ones being controlled and seeking validation like that. We don't have to accept the extinction of our human characteristics because technology is evolving faster than us. It only seems that way because we are devolving. And the solution isn't to dissociate ourselves from technology, because like I said, not having it will cause us as much stress as having it. The solution is to reconnect with ourselves. It's to love ourselves more. It's to enjoy our own company. So I want to introduce to you the Love Yourself Challenge, which is very similar to the Ice Bucket Challenge, except instead of ice, which sounds very tempting, you will be showering yourself with self-care. So the first step towards self-love is self-awareness. Acknowledge the ways in which you have wronged yourself. Maybe you've been passing up social situations. Maybe you've been staying up late at night, scrolling through your feed. Maybe you haven't been giving your loved ones enough time and attention. Once you realize all these things, you need to forgive yourself, because that's the only way you can be a positive influence on yourself and on others. Go back to the list of things you realized and try to justify them with complete honesty. Let your guard down and ask yourself why. Because if you are wronging yourself, then that's bad enough. But if you are doing it for no good reason, then you need to apologize to yourself. You need to apologize to yourself for undermining your self-worth, for undermining your time, for undermining your health. You deserve to have better relationships. You deserve to invest your time to ensure your own personal growth. And once you have forgiven yourself, promise to treat yourself better. We are not bad, we are just flawed. And we deserve to give ourselves a second chance to re-evolve, to be better, to improve. A starter could be to call your mom when you feel like being on social media. I know many of my friends do this. Go for a walk, read a book, or even daydream. Your free time is the time where you can be most creative. Allow yourself to be creative. I have given my sister 20 TED Talks similar to this one. Nothing seemed to work. She thought I was old and boring. Luckily, I had a chance to give an actual TED Talk. So I wanted to know what she thought of it. I mentioned the symptoms, I mentioned the effects, and I told her how much I missed her. I told her how much I wished that she would treat herself better. I showed her how she can take herself back because she is more powerful than she thinks she is. And I am so proud to see her for what she has became today. The biggest change that I noticed was that she became more self-aware of how she uses social media. She no longer cares what other people think of her. She started investing her free time in going to the gym. She became happier, confident, and in control again. She left her toxic relationship with her phone and established a better relationship with herself. All it is, is a simple reflective process. No one will be as happy for your achievements as much as you will. No one will appreciate your accomplishments 
as much as you do. I am extremely optimistic in us, and I can't wait to see you celebrate your journey to self-love. Thank you.